Continuing with further example, we're going to go over this uh, six example here, starting with the integral of x squared multiplied by x cubed plus 5 to the ninth. Again, we look at the composite part. We have x cubed plus 5 that is plugged inside the power 9 function. So we're going to take for you the, the inside part of this composite. In other words, this x cubed plus 5, what is plugged into the power. Then we calculate du. That's the derivative of the function times dx, 3x squared dx. And then we see what we have to match in the integral. In this case, I don't, I don't have 3x squared dx in my integral. I just have x squared dx. I can just solve for that. x squared dx is one third of du just by dividing by 3 on both sides of my expression giving du. So now I can replace x squared dx by one third of du and x cubed plus 5 to the ninth by u to the ninth. And I obtain that my integral is integral of one third u to the ninth du. The one third can be pulled out and then I have to integrate u to the ninth with respect to u. I get u to the tenth of a ten using the um, power rule for integrals. And therefore I get one third of u to the tenth of a ten up to a constant. It's going to give me u to the tenth of a thirty and I replace again u by its value, which was x cubed plus 5. So I obtain that my integral is 1 over 30 x cubed plus 5 to the 10th up to a constant. Moving on to the second integral, we want to integrate x over x squared plus 1 squared. Again, we are looking for the composite part. You see that here we have the function x squared plus 1 that is plugged into a square at the bottom. In other words, it's a power negative 2 of x squared plus 1. So I'm going to take for u x squared plus 1, calculate du, that's 2x dx, and try to match with what I have in the integral. In the integral I have x dx, not quite 2x dx, but again I can solve for x dx, divide by 2 on both sides. I get 1 half du is x dx, so the blue part x dx is going to become 1 half du, at the bottom I have u square, the 1 half, I can pull it out of the integral and I get that my integral is equal to 1 half integral of du over u squared. Now 1 over u squared is really just the power of the variable. It's u to the negative 2 that I integrate with respect to u. So I use the power rule. I get u to the negative 2 plus 1 over negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 plus 1, of course, is negative 1, so u to the negative 1 over negative 1 is simply negative u to the negative 1, which I can also write negative 1 over u. When I multiply that by 1 half, I get negative 1 over 2u, and that's, as usual, up to some constant. Again, what we want is an antiderivative of x over x squared plus 1 squared as a function of x, so we substitute back x squared plus 1 for u, and we finally obtain negative 1 over 2 times x squared plus 1 up to a constant. For the third problem, we have the integral of cosine theta to the fourth multiplied by sine theta. The composite part here is, is cosine theta to the fourth. Remember that this notation, cosine to the fourth theta, is really a shortcut to write cosine of theta that we raise to the power 4, so we really are plugging the cosine function into the power 4 function. Therefore we take for u cosine of theta, and then du is the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, multiplied by d theta. Again we try to match that with what we have in the integral. In the integral we don't have negative sine theta d theta, we have positive sine theta d theta. But that's going to be simply negative du. So we get cosine force of theta, which is going to be u to the fourth, that we multiply by negative du. Pulling the negative sign out of the integral, we obtain negative integral of u to the fourth du. And then I can just use the power rule. Antiderivative of u to the fourth with respect to u is going to be u to the fifth over 5. So I obtain negative u to the fifth over 5 up to a constant. And again, I want an antiderivative of the function of theta as a function of theta, so I substitute back for u cosine of theta, and I obtain negative cosine theta to the fifth, 
divided by 5 up to a constant. For the fourth example, we have to integrate sine of square root of x divided by square root of x. The composite part is plugging the square root function into the sine function. So for you, we are going to naturally uh, pick square root of x and we immediately calculate du. It's x to the 1 half, when you differentiate you get 1 half x to the 1 minus 1 half, so that's 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which I can write 1 half 1 over root x or 1 over 2 root x, and therefore du is 1 over 2 root x dx. Again, we try to match that with what we have in the integral, and what we have is 1 over root x dx, not 1 over 2 root x dx. But that's easy to obtain, we just multiply both sides in the equation giving me du, multiply both sides by 2. We obtain that 2 du is 1 over root x dx, which is what we, which is what we have uh, circled in blue. So at the top I have sine of u, and then what remains is simply 2 du. Pulling the 2 out of the integral, I obtain that my integral is 2 integral of sine u du. So now all I need is an antiderivative of sine, and I know that this is negative cosine. So I obtain negative 2 cosine u up to a constant. And again, as we want an antiderivative in terms of x, I substitute back square root of x for u, and obtain negative 2 cosine of root x up to a constant. The fifth exercise is simply the integral of sine of pi times t with respect to t. The composite here is to plug the function pi t into the sine function, so the natural choice for you is to take pi t. Then du is pi times derivative of t which is 1, so just pi, multiplied by dt. In the integral we just have dt, so I'm going to substitute for dt 1 over pi du. So dt is going to be replaced by 1 over pi du, and sine of pi t is going to be replaced by sine u, and therefore we obtain 1 over pi integral of sine u du. Again, all I need is an antiderivative of the sine function, which is negative cosine, so we get negative 1 over pi cosine u, substitute substituting back the value of u in terms of t, we obtain negative 1 over pi cosine of pi t up to some constant. For the last exercise in this video, we're going to try to find the integral of cosine of pi over x divided by x squared. The composite part here is to plug pi over x inside the cosine function, so the natural choice for the new variable u is to take pi over x. To calculate du, we differentiate pi over x, pi is a constant, derivative of 1 over x is derivative of x to the negative 1, so I'm going to get negative x to the negative 2, which is negative 1 over x squared. Therefore, du is negative pi over x squared dx. As usual, we try to match that with what we have in the integral which in this case is just 1 over x squared dx. So we solve for 1 over x squared dx by dividing both sides by negative pi, and we obtain that negative 1 over pi du is 1 over x squared dx. So we're going to replace in the integral 1 over x squared dx by negative 1 over pi du, and pull out this multiplicative constant, negative 1 over pi. At the top, I have cosine of u. Therefore, my integral is simply negative 1 over pi integral of cosine u. So all I need is an antiderivative of cosine u, which is sine u. Therefore, I obtain negative 1 over pi sine u up to a constant, and substituting back pi over x for u, I obtain my antiderivative of the original function, namely negative 1 over pi sine of pi over x up to a constant. In the next video, we are going to look at how we can use this, combining with the fundamental theorem of calculus, in order to obtain a general method to calculate definite integrals.